Okay, really interesting integral here today. We've got this one from the UK integration B 2024, number 13. We've got the integral from zero to one of x minus one over x plus one times ln x dx. Okay, I have a few different ways to do this one. And, it's, and this is such a good problem that I think I'm gonna do a video for every method I find. So at least two videos, I think. Maybe three, four, 10 videos, I don't know. We'll just do all the methods. So anyway, to get started with this, I think all the methods I know involve Feynman's trick in some way. And so we could kind of do that first. We could do it, we could do Feynman's trick now, we could do it later. But actually what I want to start with is kind of just creating a one right here. So we notice that we have one over X plus one here, and we can put that in the form to try to use our geometric series formula. So like what I'm thinking is if we write this, if I write this as one over one minus minus X, well, of course, the minuses are going to cancel. It's just going to be the same thing as this x plus 1. But then this allows me to put it into our geometric series formula. Our input here is just going to be minus x to the n. Our check on it is just that minus x or the absolute value minus x needs to be less than 1. This is going to work because our bounds are going from 0 to 1. So all of our x values are going to work here. So what I can do is take this right here and plug it back into our integral. And let's see how we have when we do that. So we have... We haven't touched yet this x minus one over ln x. So we'll bring this over here and then we'll just plug in this series here. But when I do this, let's break up this minus one. I'll write this as minus one to the n times x to the n. So we'll break that up. We'll split it like this. And then let's just distribute everything inside the sum. So when we have that, we'll have this thing here, our sum. Now when I do this, okay, the whole denominator is gonna be ln x. I also want to distribute the x minus one into the x to the n. So here, let me, we'll leave the minus one to the end here. Distributing x to the end here, we're gonna have this becomes x to the n plus one minus x to the n. But then let's just swap the order here. We'll swap the order of integration with the summation here, just like this. And then with this minus one to the n, this is just gonna be a constant with respect to x. So I can bring this outside of the integral, we'll bring that out front. And then at this point, you may recognize this integral right here. I've done a couple of videos that were really similar to this. We did something, not quite in this form, but we had one where it was like x to the fifth here. We had one where it was x to the 69. We probably had one where it was x to the 2024. Who knows all? Who knows what we had, but um, I think we had one where it was like x to the b. We had a lot of different things. But I do need to do one thing to get this in exactly that form that we had. Let me make a little space and spread this out here. We'll just have to kind of manipulate this numerator a little bit. So what I'll do is kind of separate this out. So I'm not changing it, right? We have our x to the n over here. Now in that other problem I did with Feynman's trick, what we wanted right here is we had a minus one to make this work. And we're gonna need that in order to do this. So then that has, when we split this, this first integral is gonna be perfectly set up, but then we wanna do the same thing here on the second one. But notice we haven't changed it because we've got this minus sign in the middle. You distribute it in here, you're gonna have a plus one. So all we did was we just added one, subtracted one, we just added zero. So then what we can do is split this up into two integrals, but they're both of the same form. They just have this constant here. So what we're gonna be able to do is we can use Feynman's trick just once on both these and get a way to simplify this. Okay, now moving on to Feynman's trick, I have parameterized this with this new variable a. So we have our function in terms of a, and what we're gonna do is we're using this to reflect each of these integrals here, which are really similar, just a slightly different exponent. So we'll just notice for this first one, our a value is gonna be n plus one, so we can come back and get that value. And for the second one, our a value is just gonna be n. Another important thing here, a reason this is gonna work is when a is equal to zero for our f of zero value, just notice x to the zero is one, the numerator becomes zero, the whole thing's zero. So we can use this value, come back to this later. But then for my next step on this, what we need to do is we just need to take a derivative here, but we need to differentiate with respect to a. When we do that, when we do that, I want to differentiate inside the integral here. We'll differentiate with respect to a. Now, the part I need to worry about is the part with the a. We can worry about differentiating this, but this one over ln x here, let's bring it all the way out here, but that's just going to be a constant with respect to a. The derivative of one is going to be zero. Let's not worry about that. Derivative of x to the a, it's just kind of a matter of getting used to the fact that a is the variable. We can write this as e ln x times a. When you differentiate that, you just get back e ln x a, but then we need chain rule 
then chain rule on this, derivative of a is just one, we're gonna have an L and X pop out. So when we do this, we can write this back, put this back as X to the A, and what we have here is X to the A times ln X over this ln X dx. But then the ln X's are gonna cancel out, and then what we've got left is just something easy. We can just do power rule on this. A is just a constant now in the integral. So doing this, integral here is gonna be just x to the a plus one over a plus one evaluated from zero to one. At zero, the whole thing's zero. Don't have to worry about that. Plug in one here and we've got our value for a prime. It's just gonna be one over a plus one. But to get back to our goal, we wanna get this f of a value because we wanna find this piece and this piece. So we need to kind of go backwards here. Let's clean all this up a little bit. So in order to get back to f of a from f prime of a, we just need to integrate on both sides, but we're integrating now with respect to a, then just integrate this. This is gonna be easy one. This is just gonna be natural log a plus one. I'm dropping absolute value. We're gonna say a is gonna be positive on this. So we're not worried about the absolute value here. Plus c, this is gonna be our f of a. And so we just need to get a value for our c value. We'll use this equation right here, plug in zero, f of zero, plug in zero here. This is just gonna become natural log one plus c equals zero. This piece is zero. So the way this works is if c is also equal to zero, coming back here, we can just kind of get rid of this plus c. It's not gonna affect anything. And now we figured out our value for f of a. So now at this point, we've got everything we need right here to find to just get our values for these two integrals here. So let's do that. For this one right here, we just want f of n plus one. For this one over here, we just want f of n, just using the exponents here. So for this first one and putting n plus one here, this is just gonna be natural log of n plus two, putting that together. And this one, just really just substituting in an n in for the a here, this is just gonna be natural log of n plus one. So I'm gonna do, so then let's just take this value and plug it back in here. We'll take this value, plug it back in here, continue and see if we can finish this off. Okay, now we sort of have an answer here, but it's not too satisfying. We wanna see if we can get some simplification on this whole thing. Try to get something a little nicer than this series here. What I wanna do in this is just start plugging in some n values and try to get a sense of it. So like we'll start plugging in at n equals zero here. This just becomes a one and we end up with natural log two minus natural log one. Then when n equals one, this becomes a minus sign and we end up with ln three minus ln two. Sign changes back to a plus and it's gonna be ln four minus ln three. You can kind of see the pattern where these are just differing by one. So we'll just kind of keep going and write out some terms just like this. And then we kind of notice there's a nice symmetry the way we have this right now here where we have like, all these are even, two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, et cetera. If we distribute in this minus sign here, these are gonna be pluses and we have the same thing here. We have another ln two, we've got two copies, ln four, ln six, that's gonna continue like that. Let me just get rid of parentheses so we can show that we also have this minus sign on all these odd terms. And then sort of the same kind of thing with the odd terms where here we have minus ln three, minus ln three, minus ln fives here, minus ln seven. So we have all of our odd terms with minus sign we have this extra minus ln one right here, which is just zero, but I still wanna kind of keep track of that. So what we can do actually to consolidate all this stuff is just use log properties to try to fold it all together into one expression. With our log properties, when we have a minus sign, we divide by those terms. If we have a positive sign, we multiply those. So for all these even terms that are positive, okay, here and here, we can just start writing it down. Like for these, for the ln twos, we can multiply those together and I can write this in the numerator as two squared. And then multiplying in the two fours, we're gonna have four squared. And then for the sixes, six squared. And this is just gonna keep going on like this forever. And then for the odd terms, I'm gonna be a little more careful because we have this thing where we're kind of shifted. So what I'll do is just, I'm gonna do this column right here and write it as one times three times five times seven, like so, onto infinity. And then we're multiplying by all these which are really similar, but we'll just start at three. But then what we can do is we can put this into the product notation. We can write it like this, and this big product is not 3.14. It's saying we're multiplying all this stuff. So if this product, let's use a different variable. We'll say we're going from k equals one to infinity. Everything in the numerator is gonna be even, so I'll write this as two n squared. 
I'll capture these odd terms separately. We'll write this one as 2n minus 1 and this one as 2n plus 1. So we'll just write this in, 2n minus 1, 2n plus 1. And the reason I'm carefully getting it into exactly this form is what we found, this thing right here, this is just the Wallace product. And this one has a known value of pi over 2. In a previous video, just a couple weeks back, I didn't really prove it. I kind of did like a quick derivation of this value. And so we're just going to use this value that this is pi over 2. And so for my final solution of this, we just have natural log pi over 2. Okay, there you have it. Really good one today. UK 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.